की माँ है बीबी सुमाना खातू आपके बाबा जाहे मोहम्मद साल की उम्र में पाई थी जिम्मेदारी मामक की और अल की तुह शाहजादा है दो जहाँ रंज की है तेरी दास Naki alayhi salam endured the rule of six Abbasid caliphs namely Mutaasim bin Harun, Wathiq bin Mutaasim, Mutawakkil bin Mutaasim and Muntasir, Mustain and Mutaaz bin Mutawakkil. Among them Mutawakkil was the most tyrannical and oppressive ruler and worst enemy of the Ahli Bayt. Al-Mutawakkil tried his best to harm Imam Naki alayhi salam. One of his first acts was to manage the young man's life and beliefs. The caliph asked a famous scholar and poet, who was also the enemy of the Alibat, Ubaidullah Junaidi, for the imam's tutorage. However, Junaidi had this to say, I swear by God that among the living people, the imam is the most superior. What I say is because of what I have been taught by the imam. Mutawakkil's next evil deed was to send many cruel enemies of the Ahl Bayt, such as Zurafa and Sayyid, to torture the Imam. But having seen the Imam's devotion to Allah in the most miserable environment of the prison, the guards said, the Imam seemed to be an angel in human garb. Not satisfied with the torture of the Imam while he was in Medina, Mutawakkil called the Imam to Samara near Baghdad as if leaving the ancestral city was not painful enough mutawakkil further tried to disgrace the imam by locating him in the shadiest neighborhood mutawakkil knew that the people were ready to do anything that their imam commanded so on any suspicion he ordered raids on the imam's quarter and each time his soldiers found the imam alone wearing simple clothes and sitting on the bare ground praying or reciting the Quran. To humiliate the Imam further, Mutawakkil sent his soldiers in the middle of the night to arrest and bring the Imam to the palace. Mutawakkil, who was drinking heavily, asked the Imam to sit beside him and drink. The Imam declined firmly. Mutawakkil then insisted that the Imam must recite some poem. The Imam recited the following lines. Protected by valiant warriors, they passed the night on the summit of their mountains, but these mountains did not protect them. After all their power and pomp, they had to descend from their lofty fortresses to the custody of the tombs. Oh, what a dreadful change! Their graves had hardly received them when a voice was heard exclaiming, Where are the thrones and the crowns and the robes of state? Where are now the faces of the delicate, which were shaded by veils and protected by curtains? To this the tomb replied, The worms are now reveling upon these faces. Long were these men eating and drinking, but now they are eaten by the worms in their turn. These words shocked many. The imam was therefore not bothered for some time after this incident. Another event of these wretched times is about Ibn as-Sakit, who was an acknowledged scholar of language rules. 
He was also the tutor of Mutawakkil's sons. To test his love of the Ahlul Bayt, Mutawakkil asked him, "Are my two sons more respectable than Hasan and Hussein?" A true follower of Ahlul Bayt, Ibn As-Sakit retorted, "Not to speak of Hasan and Hussein, Imam Ali's slave Kumbar is more respectable than both of your sons." At this response, Mutawakkil became furious and had Ibn As-Sakit's tongue cut off. One of the most heinous crimes of Mutawakkil was the demolition of the grave of Imam Hussein in Karbala several times. He even wanted to dig up the Imam's body and burn it, but Mutawakkil failed in all his efforts. For example, he tried to flood the grave of Imam Hussein, but by a miracle, the river water encircled the grave and did not go over it. Mutawakkil then ordered that the whole area be plowed including the grave. This time the horses stopped short of the grave and despite all the efforts the animals did not move. Now Mutawakkil turned against the pilgrims and banned them from visiting the shrine of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. He also decreed that those wanting to visit Karbala would have their fingers, hands and feet cut off. And as it did not stop the pilgrims, he ordered that for every person to visit the shrine, one family member was to be killed. It is a strange irony of history that the tyranny of the early oppressors or the bombing of the contemporary times has actually increased the number of pilgrims visiting Karbala. Millions now visit the holy shrines. ہر ذرے میں غلطا ہیں ہزاروں آفتاب خار کی نبضوں میں جاری ہے جہاں خون گلاب جس کے خار و خسم ہے خوشبو آل بو تراب کربلا تاریخ عالم میں نہیں تیرا جواب کربلا تو آج بھی قائم ہے اپنی بات پر As for Al-Mutawakkil, these deeds angered many Muslims. People wrote anti-Abbasid slogans on the walls, while poets who loved Ahl-e Bayt expressed their feelings in their poems. Mutawakkil's cruelties aroused so much hatred that even his own children turned against him. Finally, in 250 AH, his son Al-Muntasir assassinated him. His death was a great relief for the world. Imam Ali Naki's moral excellence was the same as displayed by each and every member of the sacred household of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam. They all refrained from worldly ambitions and greed. Whether in prison or in confined freedom, the sacred imams were engaged in worship and in helping the poor and the needy, regardless whether they were friends or foes. Similarly, Imam Naki under all hardships spent his time in ibadah. Moreover, even from his confinement, his message of true Islam reached out to every household in Samra and its vicinity. For their part, his pupils from Iraq, Persia, and Egypt were thirsty for knowledge and flocked around the Imam to learn the teachings of the Ali Bat. During his confinement, the Imam wrote the Sahifa that contained narrations from Imam Ali and the Holy Prophet. He also arranged for Bibi Nurjis to come to Samara to marry his son, Imam Hassan Askari. She was also to be taught Islamic jurisprudence by Imam Naki's learned sister, Bibi Hakima. Finally, one of Imam Naki's crucial missions was to guide the Momineen for the occultation of the 12th Imam. The Abbasids, like the Umayyads before them, knew that the Imams possessed limitless knowledge. Many times they had to ask the Imams for answers to questions raised by both Muslims and non-Muslims. Mutawakkil was no exception. Although he was full of venom for the Ahl Bayt, on many occasions he asked Imam Naki alayhi salam for answers that he could not find himself or through his scholars. During Al Mutawakkil's rule, the Imam was asked to present himself for a number of debates with prominent scholars. such as Yahya bin Akhtam. Yahya had been humiliated earlier in a debate with Imam Muhammad Taqi alayhi salam. During all such encounters, Imam Ali Naki alayhi salam silenced those scholars, including Yahya bin Akhtam, through his divine knowledge. 
According to another narration, Hazrat Shah Abdul Azim, a fifth generation descendant of Imam Hassan ibn Imam Ali alayhi salam, asked Imam Naki a few questions about basic beliefs. Starting with Allah, the Imam said, He is one, He is the creator of all, the master, the cherisher, and the sustainer. We cannot think of his shape or form, yet there is no way for us to negate him. The Imam further said, The Prophet Muhammad ﷺ is the Abd or servant of God, the Rasul, the Prophet with Sharia, and Khatam, the seal of the Prophethood. Next, Imam Ali ﷺ is his Wali. He is the Amir al muminin or the Master of the Faithful. Then there are the rest of the twelve Imams, starting with Imam Hassan ﷺ and Hussein ﷺ. They have introduced the Sharia to be continued until the Day of Judgment. As for the question about Imam Mahdi, the Imam said, Imam Mahdi salam is in ghaibat, occultation, until the time he will rise and remove tyranny and bring justice to the world. A woman named Zainab claimed that she was the daughter of Imam Ali salam and was in Karbala with her brother Imam Hussein. The confused Mutawakkal requested Imam Naki to confirm Zainab's claim. The Imam said that as the wild beasts do not harm the children of Fatima binti Muhammad, I suggest that she be sent to the cage of the lions. Zainab began to tremble and confessed that she had lied about her background. But now Mutawakkil thought of a scheme to get rid of the Imam. He ordered that the Imam be thrown to the beasts to test the claim about the children of Bibi Fatima Sallallahu <laughs> Tumko shiro ne sajda kiya Ya sakhiya Once Mutawakkal asked a visiting Hindu magician to play some trick to embarrass Imam Naki, the magician requested Mutawakkal to invite the Imam for meals. As dining started and the Imam lifted a piece of bread, it fell down from his hands. This happened a few times while those present started laughing. The Imam understood the mischief. It was now his turn to show some of his divine power. He looked at a picture of a lion on the wall and ordered it to come to life. The lion came to life and swallowed the magician. The caliph and all the rest were petrified and begged the imam to spare their lives. Once during the rule of Al-Wathiq, a friend of the Imam came to visit him in Medina. The Imam asked about the condition of the Caliph. The man replied that when he was leaving Iraq, the Caliph was fine, while Al-Mutawakkil was in prison and Ibn Zayyat had been famous among the people. Imam Ali Naki salam, after a moment's silence said, O oh my friend, be aware that Wathiq has passed away and Mutawakkil has succeeded him, and Ibn Zayyat has been slain upon the behest of Mutawakkil. On his return, the man found that indeed every word that the Imam had told him was true. In order to disgrace Imam Naki, once a sycophant instigated Mutawakkal to order his officials not to show protocol, such as holding the curtains or opening the doors when the Imam visited. However, when the Imam arrived, the doors opened and the curtains were drawn automatically. Mutawakkal was so embarrassed that he ordered the officials to continue giving special attention to the Imam. The Caliph had asked a jeweler to carve a precious stone. While the jeweler was working on the stone, it accidentally split into two. The terrified jeweler begged the Imam for help. The Imam told him not to worry and that he would have good news in the morning. The next day, while at the court and even before the jeweler could say anything, the Caliph asked him if he could cut the stone in two for his two daughters. We now present a few sayings of Imam Ali Naki salam. To think of the blessings of Allah as he blessed you with faith so you could avoid hell. 
He gave you well-being and He gave you the opportunities to stay away from haram. He gave you contentment to protect your dignity. Some of the Imam's other sayings are, The one who spends his life in refuge of God, the world's discomforts will become easy for him. Allah has made this world for testing His servants, while He has made the hereafter for receiving the result. Others will fear a person who fears Allah, and others will obey him who obeys Allah. There are definite places in which Allah likes people to supplicate to Him. One of these places is the tomb of the Master of Martyrs, Hussein. Do not expect honesty and purity of intention from someone who has suffered from your malice. Do not expect loyalty from one to whom you have been disloyal. Do not expect goodwill from someone whom you regard with ill will. His heart towards you is the same as your heart towards him. The Imam advised for keeping fast on four days of the year, namely 17th Rabiul Awal, 27th Rajab, 25th Zilqad, and 18th Zilhaj. Like the Bani Umayyads, most of the Bani Abbasids were enemies of the Alibat and their followers. After a brief and relatively calm period following the death of al mutawakkil cruelties against Imam Naki and his followers were renewed by al mutaz as he became the caliph. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum ya Allah 